Alright Econ 200, this is the first video that I'm going to post about chapter 10 on externalities. And in this video, I'm going to make it pretty quick. I just want to talk about uh, a few definitions. So when an economist talks about an externality, what that means is we're talking about something that has an effect on bystanders. Bystanders being anybody who's not directly involved in the purchase or production of the good in question, okay? A lot of goods, maybe even most goods that you consume, don't really have externalities or at least don't have significant externalities. When you're talking about, uh, let's say, the um, you know purchasing a hamburger at In-N-Out, the uh, producer, the firm In-N-Out, they have their costs of producing that hamburger, the labor, the beef that they have to buy, the the um, you know the the buns and and all that, and you have a value for uh, for consuming it, a maximum price that you would be willing to pay, and nobody besides you and the the uh, restaurant are really affected by this. However, some goods when they get produced, there are third parties, there are bystanders who aren't involved in the transaction who end up being affected by it. Okay, and I'll give you some examples when I talk specifically about negative and positive externalities. A negative externality is when a good imposes a, uh, a cost. It costs bystanders. Okay, so some examples of this. would be, let's say, pollution. That's sort of the canonical example of a negative externality. So uh, in and out when they pro uh, you know, produce their hamburgers, they're not having any big effects on, on any of their neighbors, negative effects. However, uh, you could imagine setting up like a factory that's, uh, that's producing something, okay? Maybe you um, set up like a, a uh, coal-fired power plant, or you set up a um, a factory that's manufacturing uh, cars or um, you know furniture or something like that, or maybe a paper mill. Uh, and when you produce this product, you may be emitting, uh, say, noxious gases into the atmosphere, pollution, particulate matter into the air around you, and that imposes a cost on the people who live nearby and maybe even people who live uh, far away, okay? So pollution could, um, you know, uh, aggravate the asthma of people who live in the near vicinity. It also reduces the, uh, the environmental quality that they're living in, so the sky doesn't look as attractive, all right? It could have a number of different costs. That pollution does not impose a direct cost on the seller or on the buyer, right? So, or at least it doesn't impose all of its direct costs on the on the seller or on the buyer. So when the uh, when the the factory owner is deciding how many units to produce, what he's comparing is the price that he can sell his product for against what it costs him personally to produce that next product. Okay, and that cost is only going to be things like the cost of labor, the cost of rent. Uh, the cost of, uh, of you know loans that he has to interest on loans that he has to pay back to the bank, those are all private costs. He's not going to be considering what are the external costs, the social costs onto the people in the vicinity around him, the cost of of treating asthma to the uh, the people whose asthma he's aggravated, or the uh, the cost of environmental degradation to the people whose scenery he is ruining. Okay, he's ignoring those costs. And that's why externalities can lead to uh, inefficient markets, as we'll see in the next lecture or the next lecture video. Another example of a negative externality would be traffic, which is something we're all familiar with in Southern California. When you get on the road, you are imposing on everybody else on the road in, the, in that now the, tra the road is a little bit more congested. It's a little bit more difficult for other people to get where they're going as quickly as they were going to go. They now have to navigate around you. And again, this is something that we don't consider usually when we pull onto the, and onto the highway. I always like to ask people, 
have you ever checked the traffic report before you got onto the road? And have you ever gotten onto a road that's congested with traffic and thought, wow, I can't believe there's all these people. I wish they'd all get out of my way. And almost everybody has thought that before. Then I'll ask, well, have you ever considered when you get on the road that you're part of the problem? That other people, everybody else on that road is wishing that you would get off so that they could uh, get, get to where they're going a little bit quicker. And in fact, almost never does anybody think of that. You're worried about the effect that traffic will have on you. You're not worried on the, fa the fact that when you get on the road, you're affecting everybody else. Okay, you're worried about the cost of your time, not the cost of anybody else's time. Now, negative externalities tend to hog up all the attention. It's what people uh, tend to focus on, I think mostly because they're easy to see and we also get more worked up about things that bother us than uh, about not having more good, uh, good things that we could be having. Uh, but those things do exist. We call them positive externalities. And that would be when something that you are doing benefits bystanders. Okay, so you're imposing an external benefit onto other people that are not the buyer and are not the seller. They are uninvolved in the transaction. These also exist. You can think of some examples. One of them would be um, private security. So maybe you live in a neighborhood where there's been a few break-ins or you're just not confident that the level of... Um, Policing is sufficient, and so you could hire a security guard to stand watch outside of your house. Now, that is going to have a private benefit to you in that your house is less likely to be robbed. And, of course, it also has a private benefit to the, um, uh, to the seller because he's, you're paying him a, a price for his services. However, in addition to that, you're probably having positive spillover benefits uh, to your neighbors. Because if you have a security guard outside of your house, keeping your house safe, not only is a potential thief going to not rob your house, they're probably also not going to rob your immediate neighbors either. Because the thief might be worried that uh, if he tries to rob their house, uh, your security guard might stop him and, uh, and detain him for arrest. Or even if your security guard doesn't do that, he might call the police who may then capture the thief. Or if he won't even do that, then at least he's a witness to the crime. And that makes it more likely that, uh, that this thief will get caught and, uh, and put in prison if he is caught. And so you're not thinking about that benefit that you're conferring on your neighbors when you decide to hire this private security guard. So it could be that the neighborhood in general would be better off, not just with that one security guard, but if you would hire a second or a third, that might be even better for the neighborhood. But since you're the one paying for it, you're just worried about what does it cost you compared to how much does it benefit you? You're not comparing your cost to the benefits of yourself and your neighbors. Another example might be real estate development. Uh, if, if a developer builds like a new, um, a new shopping mall that could have a positive impact on the property values of the homes in the, the nearby vicinity, or if a city government decides to develop some real estate into a park, again, that's going to be, make the homes on the periphery of that park, uh, more attractive and more valuable on the market. But, uh, the real estate developer in particular is really just going to be worried about how much can he increase the value of his own property? And he's not going to worry too much about how much value does he uh, confer onto the people around the property that he is uh, he's developing. Okay. Now here's the issue: uh, externalities can lead to inefficiency. Uh, they can lead to inefficiency. I'll show you with graphs in the next video. But when there's a negative externality, if you're not taking to, into account the cost that you're, you're, you're imposing on other people, you might produce too much of that thing. With a positive externality, if you're not taking into consideration the benefits, 
that you are conferring on other people, you may produce too little of that thing. And that means that the market is inefficient. We haven't gotten to the place where all of the available gains from trade um, or the maximum available gains from trade have been realized. All right, so I'll, we'll talk about that in the, uh, the next video.